Today I'm going to take you with me on my long road to a bronze mace and $125, and what happens when everything inevitably goes wrong. Okay, let's set the scene. Sometime in early October, and I'm in art class, I'm sitting next to this kid, uh, what's the worst human name? Dennis. I'm sitting next to Dennis, and we're talking, and we end up getting onto the subject of maces. Because I love maces, and if I had to guess, I was probably on a long rant about how they're absolutely the coolest weapon in antiquity. It's the most human innovation that exists. Like, heavy thing on the end of a stick keeps the... Babylonians and Assyrians and Hittites away. It just makes sense if you're living like out somewhere where you need a mace. Anyway, I digress. So we're talking and I tell him, you know, if you paid me, I could totally make you a mace. Whatever I said that day convinced him that both A, I was capable of making a mace and B, that it was a good use of his money. So that day he gave me 25 bucks and promised another 125 on completion, which I immediately jumped on that opportunity because I'm moving out in May and I desperately, desperately need money. So after a few months of procrastinating, I thought, finally, let's just get this out of the way. Let's get it done so I can move on to something else. It's just going to be quick in and out. Just do one video. Yeah, yeah you, you saw the intro. You, you know how that turned out. Casting is a difficult process and more than difficult most of the time. You spend hours or days working on one piece and all of it can be undone in just a couple of seconds if you make a mistake along the way. And looking back, all the mistakes I made seem pretty obvious. And while I can't go back and stop myself from making them, I can still show you. So if you also feel the masculine urge to make and sell bronze weaponry, you'll know what not to do. So let this be a cautionary tale, like something to learn from. If you go down this path, you're going to ruin things. Things that you worked very, very hard on. It's just part of the process. But maybe you'll ruin less after you watch this. So let's jump right into it. That's getting kind of cold. I always start these projects the same way. You gotta melt a bit of wax to make weapons for profit, I guess. Doesn't roll off the tongue like the omelet analogy, but whatever. All the wax I use comes from these ring tubes, and I have quite literally broken so many while carving that I can make giant chunks like these out of their shattered remains. But even though I can't make rings out of any of this, it was still taking a huge risk. A risk that I can sum up in seven words. Wax is expensive, and I am broke. A six pack of the ring tubes costs like $25. I've been doing this almost two years, and I've only been able to force myself to buy a pack twice. I definitely picked the wrong wax. I should have gone with something cheaper, but I took the gamble, like an absolute clown. And once again, you saw the intro, so you know exactly how that turned out. I spent a really, really long time on this mace head, and... I'm only using like maybe an eighth of that footage, if that. I filmed this with like a how-to guide in mind back when I thought that I would be more discussing the process of how to make a mace instead of starting a two-part series and more so going over the trials and errors of the casting process. But this is more than everything that I had to say about this part of the process, so just enjoy some B-roll for a second. Oh right, and uh, Scrimmy makes an appearance here too. I have an assistant. Now credit where credit is due, I'm pretty happy with how the handle turned out. I cut down a young beech tree about a year ago to make a good staff because I'm an old man and I do old man things like wearing slippers and going on walks, so of course I need a good staff. But I never got around to using it, so I chopped a length off the end and got to sanding. Of course I wore a respirator so I wouldn't put hardwood floor on the inside of my lungs and I got to work. After a bit of sanding, it's smooth, it's sturdy, and it's going to be gorgeous when it's oiled and polished, but that's for the next video. It's almost like it was specifically grown to become the handle for a beautiful bludgeon, and it fits the head nice and snug too, so really, what could go wrong? So it's usually pretty hard to mess up this part of the process. Just put a really solid sprue on your piece so the metal has a big opening to pass through, mix the right portions of plaster and water, vacuum to remove the bubbles, and pour. Which is what I did, but something did catch my eye. The layer above the piece was looking a little thin, but I thought, whatever, it'll, it'll probably be fine. So I ignored it and stuck my mold in the wood stove like an absolute clown and just kept on trucking. I put most of my casting grain in the crucible to be safe, lit up the furnace for what I thought might be, fingers crossed, the last real leg of this journey. 
and I do mean journey. I've probably been working on this in some capacity on and off since January, so it was a long time coming. I hammered my tongs back into shape, and it was time to pour. So remarkably, the mold didn't break in the wood stove, which I totally thought it was going to, but something did happen when I got it into the vacuum machine. I don't think you can hear it, but it's like a soft popping sound. I didn't know what it was, but I was running out of time, so I just poured. Again, like an absolute clown. So I am not exaggerating when I say this is the most catastrophic failure I've ever had. The popping sound was that plaster I was worried about getting sucked out the bottom. So instead of literally any semblance of a cast, I got a giant bronze disc on the inside of my expensive equipment. So what do I do now? Well, I've got the heavy part. I mean, now I just need a stick. I could still make something. Plus, I had this watermelon and I really, really wanted to destroy something. So, why not put it to good use? So, once more I got to toiling. I ground some semblance of an edge on the disc, grabbed literally the first piece of wood I found, cut it in half, put a notch down the middle, and we got the axe of immeasurable disappointment. With a surprisingly snug fit. And with my beautiful handcrafted weapon finished, I went out to the backyard and set up my victim. Let's just call him... Oh, what's another awful name? Trevor! With Trevor set up, I went out and grabbed my axe, and I brought a few other implements, because why not? It's gonna be fun. And so, with that, I found... That worked a lot better and a lot faster than I thought it would. You know... I thought I'd get him, but not, not that much. Hmm. Round two. Get back up there. There you go. I don't think I'm even gonna hit him with the hammer. I think he's good. Let's let's use the machete. You know, I don't even like watermelon. I just figured. I mean, if I'm doing this, I have to at least have some. I mean, it's just a waste otherwise. Victim of a violent world. Rest well, sweet prince. And that pretty well sums up the casting process. It's an art form like any other. You draw, you're gonna get a couple of these. You paint, you're gonna get some of these. Actually, th those work sometimes, so I guess that's not the worst thing in the world. I have two big mottos in my life. The first one is toil for your food. And I say it to myself 44 times in the mirror every morning when I wake up, 4.30 sharp, but that's not important. The second big one is to not take success or failure too seriously in art. If you make something that ends up sucking, good, then you can just experiment and have fun and try new things with it because there's no expectation anymore. Now you can just do whatever you want. Foundry work is a super rewarding hobby and it definitely comes with its highs and lows, but if you can just learn to roll with the lows and have fun in what you're doing, then you're gonna get better. Get back up and try again, which is why I'm gonna be finishing the maze soon. I will get my $125. Stay tuned for part two. I'm Mick the Modern Artisan, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. If your name is Dennis or Trevor, I'm not sorry even one bit. Like and subscribe.